Hello. Nat, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, can you hear me? I can. What happened? Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> You have a smaller group. That's okay. I was on mute. Hello, everyone. Hello. All right. Hi there. How are you? How's everybody? Good. Thank you. Good. Good. So I, I thank you so much for taking time out of your evening to join us. Um, I wanted to give families an opportunity to ask any questions you have regarding uh, starting school, what it's going to look like, if you had any other questions as we're leading into the, the new normal here at St. Bonaventure. Uh, but let's, let's begin with a prayer as we're uh, getting started this evening. Um, so let's center ourselves for a second. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for these families who entrust us with their wonderful students. We pray for their safety, as we're in barking upon a new normal at St. Bonaventure High School, we pray for everyone who's worked so hard to make this a great school year. Uh, we ask for your blessings, we ask for your mercy, and we pray that we will uh, soon be able to come together um, as a student body family and um, see each other in person. We ask this in your, in your name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, I wanted to let you know that we have a great talent that's on the Zoom tonight. I have Mr. George Mead, our Assistant Principal of Student Life and Campus Security. Mr. Mike Herrera, our Assistant Principal of Mission Advancement and International Schools, School Director. Mrs. Susan Bailey, our Dean of Student Learning and Faculty Development is joining us. We also have Mrs. Christina Haran, who is our Dean of Academic Excellence. Mrs. Natalie LaJoy is with us as well, our lead counselor. And Mr. John Muller, our athletic director. I know there will be some um, athletic questions along the way. Mr. Paul Maris is with us as well, director of advancement and outreach. I, I thank my staff for joining me again. This is round two. We had a great meeting earlier um, with a round of parents uh, answering any questions. Um, Mr. Paul Maris is going to help me uh, manage the chat. So if you wanted to type in any questions, uh, feel free to, to go ahead and, and do so. Um, just to catch you up, we are uh, had completed today day one of two days of our faculty in service. We had a wonderful retreat this morning. Um, Alex Wilson, who is our director of alumni relations, put uh, forth a wonderful retreat for us. So we're very excited. Mrs. Moran had given us some instruction on um, fine-tuning our Zoom skills, our Google Classroom skills, so we're very excited to uh, play around with the different platforms that we learned today. Um, basically what I wanted to do is go over the, the schedule that we have and um, free up the, the floor for any questions that you have um, as we're getting ready. I'm, I'm, we're excited um, to um, have your students with us virtually. We hope that one day we will you know, have kids on campus uh, in the near future um, as well. So basically our schedule, um, uh, we had emailed a schedule out and listening to what's happening with the county, being um, aware of what's happening and what our restrictions are with opening our school safely um, and knowing we need to be off that watch list for 14 consecutive days really um, handcuffs us a little bit. So knowing those elements we wanted to tune up the remote learning part of it and add another section, another uh, um, um, period of the day. Uh, so utilize that time frame so that we can have uh, more frequency um, with the students, um, more uh, at times where we can check in with students. Um, for us, that made a little bit more sense, so we added another uh, block of time. So basically, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 70-minute block periods will be periods one, two, three. Wednesdays and Fridays will be periods four, five, six. And this was an email that had gone out to you before. Um, our flex day will be Mondays. And Mondays uh, are a great day for, um, we're gonna stream mass once a, once a month. We're looking at streaming adoration. It's a time for activities to happen, possibly club activities, um, 
virtual workouts in athletics. Um, ASB will be meeting. We'll have faculty meetings on that day. It's, Mondays aren't a day off, so that's a day to utilize extra tutoring. We're in the process if we need to utilize that as another time frame for um, offering um, a day where uh, that's another school day. We'll do that as well. And and it is I shouldn't say that it is a school day, but we're using it as a flexible time frame for students um, to get extra help if they need it, but also to uh, take part in their club activities and things. Um, we um, it, would it be helpful to give you the breakdown of the times or did everybody already get that you just nod if, if so I'll, I'll just get it really briefly so basically the period one tuesdays or thursdays or period four wednesdays or fridays it'll be from 8 25 to 9 35. 9 35 to 9 50 will be a break time uh, for the students and, the, and, and teachers Period, then the next block of time, period two, would be 9.50 to 11, with a break at 11 to 11.15. And then the last period, period three, will be 11.15 to 12.25. The end of our synchronous schedule will end at 12.25. We'll have a lunch break, then we'll start back up at one. That's our asynchronous time frame. So that time frame, there are 30 minute chunks of time so if teachers need to tutor, if students have questions, they need to check back in with their teachers. The teachers are going to let them know the best time, uh, the best uh, way to get a hold of them is it's cell phone, Google chat, via email, a Zoom. Um, so it's extra assistance. Um, and it's also open for uh, parents as well. If you have questions, this isn't clear. I need to know what, what exactly that assignment, you know, why was that grade? Why did that, my child receive that grade? That's a time frame for you to do that as well. Mondays um, also is an opportunity for that. So I just basically wanted to just go over that schedule. Um, and again, open it up, uh, the floor up to any questions that you may have. So if you want to unmute, mute yourself and ask a question, I have uh, great people in the Zoom that can help with that. Or um, you can type your question into the chat. Our first question uh, was how will students arrange an extra slash tutoring time with individual teachers. Mrs. Vaya, you want to take that question? Sure. So the um, scheduled office hours in the afternoon, that's an opportunity for students to check in um, with their teacher then. If they need extra support beyond that, there's also the Monday. So they can e email their and let them know or some teachers you, you can also communicate through the Google Classroom some teachers prefer that method and let the teacher know that they would like to have some extra help on a Monday to be able to meet thank you and and the biggest uh, most important part of that is communication so email us let us know email your students counselor so we know um, last quarter was um what were we calling that emergency learning not remote now we've changed up the parameters of that as we're utilizing a, a more set bell schedule um you had received e an email from me about teacher expectations um student expectations um we all have a place in this and we're willing to you know do the work to to make things work for students but we also need to know if your situation at home is different than what we're experiencing. If you have something unique, let us know. We do know, um, I already gotten an email from a parent that um, uh, they have younger siblings that are at home. So they're competing for broadband with, um, what if they pop into a class late? Um, that all of our classes as the teachers are uh, teaching through Zoom will be recorded. So you'll they'll be able to go back and call up that inspection and be able to listen to it. But I'm asking that you ask your students to then email the teacher. So let them know, hey, my younger sibling was um, on a Zoom and our computer for broadband with and I wasn't able to get on. So I missed the first 15 minutes of class. But I'm going to listen to the rest of it, you know, here and then I'll go back and refresh. Um, they can download that uh, Zoom lesson from the teacher's website. So just communication so we know exactly what's going on. Next question. How's everybody doing? How are your students? We miss, I see a couple students. We miss you. 
It's nice we to miss see you too. Too. It's lovely to see you all. It's been too long. It has been too long. I agree. <laughs> it's been too long. Thank you so much for this session. It's very, very helpful. Um, so the only question I had, well, not the only, one of the other questions I have is, um, as, you know, as teachers, um, how will homework be assigned? Will it be, you know, if you have Tuesday period one, two, three, will the work be due Thursday and will Thursday's work be due on Tuesday? Uh, and again, this is for a senior as well as a junior. Um, or will it be sort of project-based work that, you know, you know what work you need to do at the beginning of the week and then it'll be due sometime over the course of the week. The latter definitely did not work as well for us just because, of course, for one of my students, uh, it gave them too many gaps to kind of go down, too many cracks. Um, but I'm just curious how, you know, how will we know when the work is due? And then this follow-up question would be, um, when will we be, uh, you know, how soon will teachers kind of check in um, that info into teacher E so um, that we can stay on top of whether assignments are missing or not? Absolutely. Thank you. That's a great question. And I, I do want um, um, either Mrs. Vai, um, any of my staff to answer that. But um, it, it, you know, flexibility here is key. But with that, I mean, there's a fine line. We want them to stay on a schedule that's healthy, that's been suggested, that we've been told that, you know, that, that's, um, that will help them transition into more of a normal uh, sense of life and help them transition to coming back to school and we're able to do so as well. But the homework question is a very good question. Do you ladies want to take that? Um, so for the homework, um, with the teachers using Google Classroom, parents, you can request access to the Google Classroom. So that way you can see um, what assignments have um, been given by the teacher and what the due dates. And as far as whether they're due daily or weekly, Depends on it's a long-term project where there might be small check-in points where the student, the making sure that the student is making progress and they're not waiting to the very last um, night. I'm a parent of um, four Bonaventure alums and I know what it's like when it's 10, 11 o'clock at night and they have the project do and they make it seem like it was just assigned but there were other little pieces they should have done along the way so it's nice that google classroom wasn't around when i was parent of bonaventure students it's nice with the google classroom that you can see what has been assigned to the student and what the um what the due dates are and as mrs castro had mentioned earlier just that communication with with the teacher if you need some from the counselors, from um, myself as the Dean of um, Student Learning, that you need us to intercede a little bit to help encourage um, your student to get their, their work done. So there isn't a one-size-fits-all answer here Absolutely. and things we do. Assignments are going to be posted as a chemistry teacher. I have this plan in mind of what we're going to be doing for a week and then it's well they didn't grasp that concept um, i'm not going to move on to the next it's i need to put in change that assignment and i need to do something to make sure that the students in the learning objectives so th those questions um it's a great question about the homework and the best thing to do is contact the teachers to find out how are you assigning it you know, and, and um what are what are the expectations for due and um, so forth. Okay. Um, one thing I'd really like to encourage all um, teachers to do, and we have some more of uh, meetings. Sorry, I'm going on a little too long. I, I tell my fine. students that I don't, I, I will not accept homework um, after 11 p.m. The blessing of the iPad is to see when it's signed, when students are submitting homework. Um, first of all, as teenagers, they need in their rest. Um, secondly, even before COVID, at night when they sleep, that's when the immune system rejuvenates. And I tell my students that send me an email at 11 p.m. and just, I, I, I'm, I'm going to bed, I can't get my homework done, okay? And then, you know, no point or so forth, okay? However, if they keep doing that, we gotta talk a little bit about time management. So there's, <laughs> you know, freshmen, you know, it's, um, 
new to high school. So the expectations of homework and so forth for freshmen will be very, very different for um, the seniors. So again, you know, uh, email the teachers, ask for access to their Google Classroom, and you know, email us for support also if your student is not getting the assignments going as they should be. Can I ask one more question? Will all teachers absolutely use Google Classroom or will they also be using other, like, uh, you know, one of the things where we, and I, it's really, um, I think a failure on my part to know exactly what um, each teacher is doing, but you know, there are times when it'll be Schoology or it'll be something else. So it, have we come to like a unified platform of everything on Google Classroom? It's, it's, um uniformed on Google Classroom and for those of us like self use both just because Schoology is a great place to put um, resources for the student but to help streamline that the assignment will be on Google Classroom if it's something on Schoology or even their go Kahoot or an Ed Puzzle which is other learning apps yeah. um, it will be posted on on Schoology. I mean, sorry, um, Google Classroom. So you don't sure. have to go to Ed Puzzle to see the assignment or quizzes. Uh, sort so of a one stop shop. Supporting information may be on Schoology or Ed Puzzle somewhere else, but the assignment itself will right. be on Google Classroom. We tracked on Google. Right, Classroom. and then with the directions, go here to get. Yeah. Perfect. Get, Thank you. you know to complete this assessment. Perfect. Thank You're you. welcome. Can I add something to that, uh, Mrs. Valle? So I know that I, Mrs. Haran can attest to this too. Um, so this is particularly for um, the Patel family. So I know that's been a big concern regarding Google Classroom and Schoology. The one thing that we haven't found as educators is a protected way to take tests on Google Classroom. So Schoology has still been a platform for some of the teachers to use as far as uh, like a time test and one that has more security measures. So I know that's one of the one of the things that school that teachers use Schoology for. Um, and Google Classroom doesn't really give us the access that we want for for those things that we can do uh, to, to check for uh, cheating, to check for time limits, uh, you know, to check some some of those things. So some the reason why there's always been kind of a duality in the in those areas, one for resources, and also for security too, because we want to yeah. make sure that there's an academic um, you know, there's definitely academic integrity with, with yes. uh, what platforms we'll put on there too. Absolutely, thank you. That helps to understand that component too. Sure. Yeah. Great. Okay, it's so nice to see everyone after such a long period. <laughs> it is, it definitely is. It's nice to see faces. <laughs> Does anybody have another question? There I'm sure another, somebody's going to have an athletic question. <laughs> there was another question posted on uh, the chat, which uh, Mrs. Saran answered. But the question was, <laughs> is when will the Google codes for the classrooms be sent out to the students? And Mrs. Saran responded that some teachers will be linking classroom and teacher ease together, so it would be automatic. But uh, some will receive an email from teachers with the code in the next few days. Just a heads up for everybody. So does anyone have any athletic questions? Uh, if not, I'll just kind of give you a, an, an update of what we're talking about with uh, county guidelines, St. Bonaventure guidelines and CIF. So if, if anyone has a question, please ask right now. I'll give you a couple seconds. If not, I'll just start in. My only athletic question is how do I hit a golf ball straight? Uh, don't, <laughs> number one choice is don't ask me. Okay. I, can't, I can't do that either. Number two choice uh, is don't play. Yeah, right. Um, actually, Sorry, that's, go ahead. <laughs> it's the one sport you can actually do right now with without any uh, compromising on. Uh, that's uh, right. You know, that's a great thing. Good question. So anyway, <laughs> with that, with athletics, CIF came out with um, their calendar for the year on, on July 20th. And we everyone was waiting for that statewide. And so what they said, they have pushed back the entire calendar. Um, so for Bonaventure, we'll start three sports in December. Football practice will start in December. And then cross country for boys and girls and girls volleyball will start games in December. So uh, we won't put any games on Christmas. We'll give you that day off. Um, but they will be playing games during that time. 
football will go until about mid-March and volleyball and cross country will go till about the same time with playoffs. And then the combined season starts, <clears throat> excuse me. So if your son or daughter plays tennis, um, golf, baseball, softball, basketball, soccer, swimming, track, any of those, they're all going to be at the same time. Now they're going to be a little bit staggered. So what we talked about in our coaches meeting last week was how to use a kid. So if, if, if your son or daughter plays, let's say it's a, it's a, a boys soccer and a baseball combination, what we've decided in the league and we're going to ratify the schedule next week, it's already actually done. Um, but we've put games on different days. So if you're a boys soccer and a baseball player, you'll play boys soccer on Monday and Thursday. And then on Wednesday and Saturday, you'll have baseball games. So what we try to do with the calendar is take traditional winter sports and traditional spring sports and put them on different days. So if you are a softball player and a girls basketball player, you'll have softball on Wednesdays and Saturdays and girls basketball will be, or excuse me, girls soccer will be Tuesdays and Thursdays. So in the springtime, it's going to be very, very convoluted, very, very busy. Um, so we don't want our athletes to lose a year of playing two sports. What we're trying to do is make sure that they can play in games in both sports, but they won't be at practices all the time for both sports. So if you're a swimmer and we swim at night and you're a track person, you want to do both of those at the same time, your son or daughter is going to be really, really busy with practices. Um, but we want to adhere to the 18 hour rule for the week. So if you have, two baseball games and two basketball games in a week. That's four total games. Each game counts for three hours. And there's only 18 total hours in a week where you can have contact with your coaches. So the practice schedule will be cut down on that. Now we know if your son or daughter is a, um, a skilled player, like as far as a pitcher or a catcher or something like that, we want to very, we want to recognize, uh, uh, them getting tired with their arms and different muscles in the body. So the coaches know that they're going to um, downplay practice a little bit, but we want to make sure we get the games in. Uh, that's going to be very important to us. So most of the sports for the second season will start either at the end of February for soccer or sometime in March for the rest of the sports. And everything's going to end in March, excuse me, in May. So if you're in playoffs for baseball or softball or track or swimming, you're going to be going into June. And if you are in soccer or a couple of the other sports, your playoffs are actually going to be in May. So if you're a two sport athlete where traditional winter and springtime sports are concerned uh, and you want to play both, you can play both. You won't be penalized for missing practices to go to a game for another sport. You want to make sure that you can do what you want to do. Uh, that's going to be very important to us and to our league. So uh, girls, girls golf will be <clears throat> Tuesday and Thursdays for league. Boys golf will be Tuesdays. Uh, swimming will be Fridays. Track is going to be dependent on when we can get a facility. Uh, so it will be either a Wednesday or a Saturday. Boys basketball will be a Monday and Thursday. Girls basketball is going to be Tuesday, Friday. Now these are all league events. So for the non-league events, what we've done is uh, put together a Google Calendar so if boys basketball is playing on a Tuesday in a non-league game, boys baseball will not will try to not schedule a game that day so that there's not conflicting uh, sports at that time. It's very, very kind of convoluted. Uh, but in the next week or so, when we ratify the calendar, we'll be able to get it out to the parents and I'll send it out probably on a, um, a teacher easy email to everyone and get that out to you guys. So... Uh, go ahead and type in a question, ask me a question, feel free at any time. I'll give you the answers that we have uh, as current as today. The question that we did uh, receive is with other school districts in the county announcing that they will be on distance learning for the entire first semester, can we expect SBHS to move to hybrid learning when the county is off the watch list for 14 days? That is our goal. When, it, when we're off the watch list, we're still putting great effort into uh, distancing, cleaning, masking, um, pra practicing proper co protocol when the kids come back. So we're still putting that into place. And when we're told we were when we're giving when we are given the all clear, that's that's our number one goal in order to do that. 
um, as right now in terms of you know county information you're getting as much information <coughs> as we are um, we still are um, handcuffed a little bit where we have to um, abide by those rules that the county sets um, Mr. Mead has been working hard on keeping us informed on what's the latest and the greatest and then what we're able to do through the Diocese of Los Angeles. So once that happens, we will give you, I'll, I'll be sending regular um, emails, updates for the to the families um, to let them know if there's a chance that we're able to come back. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to take a minute too. I, I noticed um, in, the, in the participants that our new freshman sophomore counselor has also joined us as well. So that's Nikki. I wanted to call her Nikki LaSalle, but she's a graduate of St. Bonaventure. We're very proud of her. Um, she's come back. Uh, Nikki Via, Nicole Via, she is, will be our so, uh, freshman and sophomore counselor. Um, she's also going to be teaching the creative dance classes as well that we offer here. So any freshman or sophomore counselor, uh, uh, students, uh, parents that are uh, joint, that have joined us, um, Nicole LaSalle, uh, Mrs. Via will be uh, the freshman sophomore counselor. So. Um, and we'll make sure that you get proper information uh, for her contacts as well. Next question. So uh, we have two athletics questions um, for Coach Muller. One, will Coach Shaw return to coach swimming? Uh, yes, Coach Shaw is returning. I just spoke to her last week. She's, uh, she's excited, she's fired up. I'm very lucky to have her, very excited for that. Second question is, when can girls volleyball start conditioning and practicing? So. We had three weeks this summer from June 22nd until um, the first Friday of July that we were practicing for football and we're actually conditioning for football and volleyball. Then the county shut everything down. The county's actually started up last week and said that you can do conditioning again. So um, we were at a point right then where we have about four months until the season. So we told the coaches that we'd like them to stay away for the time being just to get kids acclimated into the classroom we will start conditioning for girls volleyball, football, and possibly cross country uh, in the next couple of weeks. That's the goal. There's some volunteer, uh, volunteer uh, football workouts next week. And then I think the week after that, uh, we will start volleyball as well. So it's gonna, it's gonna happen soon. But if you look at the regular timeline and everybody's so used to playing those sports right now, this is actually about the, the beginning of March for an August regular August start right now. So we have some time. Um, that doesn't mean we're going to push it off uh, much longer. I, I think we want to get some of these kids on campus and work out with them again. But we have some time to get ready. So we'll be doing a couple of workouts a week, probably in two weeks. Another uh, sports related question. Will baseball overlap much with football? Um, I was just actually, actually answering. I just saw that right now. So football will go until March. I believe it's March 12th is the last regularly scheduled game. And baseball actually will start up, um, I believe, the Friday after that. Let me take a look at the calendar real quick. So they won't overlap uh, season-wise. Uh, football playoffs will overlap with baseball. The last day of uh, football is March 12th, which is a Friday. And then baseball will start up, uh, let's see, I believe it's the next, it's, I got too many things in my calendar here. It's going to be right around the same time. Um, so the overlap will be minimal for those two sports. The bigger overlap will be boys and girls soccer with some of the uh, winter, or the, some of the traditional sp uh, fall sports. So if you're a boys soccer player and you're a football player, there's going to be overlap of about two weeks. Um, but what we're, if your son plays boys soccer, they'll finish up the football season and then join boys soccer right after that. So as far as baseball, it will not overlap much. Um, but I'm going to find that date right now and I'll, I'll get it out to the, uh, to the thread with everybody here. We did have a question. Um, will students have a choice if they do not do or do not want to return to campus and Mr. Me did respond, but just in case anybody else has that question, um, so when students are allowed to return to campus, all families and students will have the option to stay home if they choose. Uh, we have, uh, does anyone know the best website or app to stay updated on the 14 day watch list for Ventura County? And Mr. Herrera just posted that on the chat. And then we have uh, another athletics question 
uh, incoming junior transfer, uh, to whom should she contact if she is interested in trying cross country or track? So I, uh, I was responding to the question. I'm sorry, Dave, can you ask that again, please? Uh, we have a incoming junior uh, student who's interested in cross country and track. Should yes. I send them to you or Camacho? Yes, that's fine. You can send them to me at any time. Um, they won't overlap, but usually what happens is cross country ends and those kids get about 10 to 12 weeks before they are actually running from a cross country race into a track uh, event that they're going to overlap this year. So there's the downtime on that, but it's going to be relatively small. And would, would you know if spectators will be allowed at athletic events once they begin? Boy, that is a great question. So right now, uh, when we were able to practice in June, we were in, in what was called a phase two advanced and we were allowed to do conditioning and some working out and stuff like that. We were allowed to go inside the weight room and inside the gym and do that. The county right now won't allow us to go inside of the, um, the gym or inside of the weight room to do workouts. So if we get into phase two advanced and we'll probably be able to go back into the, to those rooms and work out. We have to follow the guidelines of what it, the gym and fitness facilities for the county right now, and they won't allow people to go back in unless that's changed in the last day or so I haven't seen. But if they do change that, then we'll go back into the weight room for football and we'll go back into the gym for volleyball. As far as the parents go, if we have a game right now, uh, parents would not be allowed to go to the game. Um, if we, we just, first, in phase three, I believe we'd be allowed to have contact with other teams. Phase four is when they would open up, so everything would be back to uh, what the old normal was. So if we were going to have a game right now, uh, no, no spectators would be allowed. And kind of be under what we're watching in Major League Baseball and NBA and WNBA and stuff like that. Um, I do have an answer here. So the last day of football is Friday, March 12th. That is also the first day of boys basketball. And when we say the first day, that means you're allowed to have games that day. The first day of baseball is Friday, March 19th. So overlapping wouldn't be uh, that much depending on playoffs for football, which we hope we're in. I got all kinds of answers. So if you guys have any more questions, I'm full of knowledge right now. I wish I could say the same. <laughs> <laughs> everything's fluid right now. It, it, everything's fluid. Yes. I mean, we're Flex trying to answer as many questions yeah. athletically as we can. and. You know, if you're watching Sports Center at night and you probably are getting just as much information on the national scale as I am, but uh, we know in other states they've opened up quite a bit. We just haven't had uh, stuff open up for us in California or Ventura County. So uh, there's another question. When would practice for baseball start? Uh, they will probably start in some time in. I just got to talk to Coach Castro. They might start stuff on the field with conditioning um, maybe in late October or November, uh, maybe even later than that because they don't start until March when they usually start the second week of February. So it could be later than that. The real concern on whether um, – if we're doing a sport right now, the county – has said that you can share an athletic ball, like a football, softball, volleyball, but you can only use it between two people. If there was going to be a third person involved, then you would have to either uh, clean the, the, the ball between sharing with other people and wipe it down and put an antiviral on there, which we had done in volleyball. Um, but they've opened up a little bit more than what they had done in the past. So if we were going to actually go out and practice for baseball right now, it would just be conditioning. So we're actually in a kind of in a hurry up and wait phase on that. Boys basketball, good question there, Mr. Scanlon. Boys basketball, uh, they're going to hold off right now. Uh, our new coach uh, has decided that he's going to let the let everything kind of settle a little bit, then they'll start. So basketball will start. First game for basketball is Friday, March 12th. 
Um, so we've got some time right there. Usually we'd be in a, we'd be in the gym in about two weeks doing practice twice a week in the morning. But right now I think we're going to hold off on that. So possibly October or November. <clears throat> That's a good question. Hopefully I'll have a lot more information once we ratify um, the league schedule next week and I'll be able to send that to you guys on teacheries. I have a question. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Seth. Um, considering that distance learning was really a challenge for us, uh, is there any scenario where a student could meet with a counselor or a teacher one on one in person, even if we're on the watch list? That falls under that small group, which um, we've been able to do. And so uh, it's interesting because I just got something from the diocese last night about uh, elementary schools filing for waivers. That's a possibility down the road when we're off the watch list, but also um, having daycares, which you know, obviously we don't have a daycare or child care um, for anybody on the campus. But um, that is something that we've been discussing for possibly Mondays where it would be an opportunity for students to meet in small group for tutoring possibly group um, um, uh, club meetings in small groups. So that is something that we're working out. And once we get that, uh, uh, those details uh, specified, then what we'll do is we'll get that information out to all the families as well. Um, I had a question earlier about um, the seniors and knowing, um, uh, you know, as they're getting ready to prepare for their last year and being, you know, top of the, the food chain here, uh, the, totem, the top of the totem pole, um, uh, we're planning to do the best that we can. I feel we did a great job with our seniors last year, the class of 2020, as, as they left our school. We're preparing for fun activities the best that we can, hoping that we can move from uh, less virtual and more in person in the future and to be able to celebrate them in person. I mean, um, uh, it, it's just, it's, you know as much as we do in terms of what's going on in the county, but I can tell you there's been a lot of meetings discussing um, freshman orientation, freshman and transfer student orientation, for example. A lot of work that's going into that to help the kids acclimate, build, um, um, you know, that they're being appreciated and that they're special, especially the new kids coming in, of course, and then um, our seniors, as they're preparing for their last year, it's, it's definitely a tough, tough situation. But uh, the staff is working really hard to make sure that uh, that those those little things, those little hallmark moments aren't uh, passed over just because we can't get together. And they're being very creative and trying to figure out ways that we can have activities for the kids. We did get another uh, question. How much extra burden is there on teachers with remote learning? Who wants to take that one? <laughs> well, I can say I'm not preparing to teach a class myself, but I can uh, tell you after our staff meeting today, um, I, I don't know that it's a burden. It's the new normal of teaching. So uh, what's interesting is everyone is starting fresh from my veteran teachers to my brand new teachers they're having to recreate lesson plans and think outside the box and figure out a way to communicate those to the kids and be able to assess the kids and create meaningful lessons that's going to have a lasting effect um christine you want to talk about maybe the technology that they're they're using now i'm, I'm very impressed if this isn't the resume builder of all time um it, it's amazing what they're doing Sure, so I, I'm not sure we would call it a burden, but it is definitely a change of pace. Um, exactly what Tina said about that everyone is becoming um, new teachers all over again because we're adapting and using new tools. And it's actually kind of a, it's a cool experience to be able to incorporate a bunch of different techniques that maybe we wouldn't be able to use in a physical classroom, but now we can try something different in a virtual one. Um, so, Teachers are going to be using a wide variety of resources, so there may be a variety of different tools that you maybe haven't heard before or that have funny names, um, like Kahoot and Quizzes and um, a number of different ways that they can interact with their peers, even though they can't be in a classroom together. They can still have group discussions and they can record videos and share those with each other. So your students are going to be asked to kind of think outside the box because their assignments might not necessarily look the same as what they have in the past, but in some ways that's kind of a good thing. Yeah. yeah. No, 
that's great. Thank you very much. Yes. I, I think the other thing I would just add to that question of mine is, um, you, you know, as time goes by, if this sort of state continues, um, it, you know, if there's something we as parents can do to, you know, I know it's not an extra burden, but to facilitate this new way, then, um, you, you know, if there's anything we can do, it would be good to know. I think the best thing that you can do is to um, open a line of communication with your students and make sure that they know that you're there to support them and to help them walk through this process. Um, and that it is, um, it's a group learning effort and it's not just that it's new to them, it's new to you and it's new to the teachers and we're all walking through it together. And so the more that you can um, help support them and just ask them what their assignments are or tell me what you learned today or tell me what, what was kind of fun about class or just incorporating that into your like daily conversation will help them to talk about what's happening on campus or virtually um, and it'll also help you to know what you can do to help to support them. Great, thank you. Yes, definitely. Let us know what's happening. Your experience at home might be unique. Um, from other families. So as long as we know we're, we're prepared, we're, we're ready to face and, and help and problem solve as best we can. Uh, we have another question. What clubs are going to be available for students and are tutoring groups formed by students or teachers? Um, the list of clubs went out in the registration packet. Um, so for incoming freshmen or transfer students, that list is on, and it's on our student website, uh, school website as well. Um, so uh, the club moderators will, and, and usually during welcome week um, when we're here, we have uh, clubs represented in the quad and club moderators and students are there um, to represent the clubs and answer any questions for students who might want to join that. We'll still continue to do that so the kids will have an opportunity to see. We'll probably do something in, in a Zoom format so kids will be able to see what clubs um, are made up of and, and what's, uh, what they're all about. So we'll give them that opportunity. Um, and then the second half of that was for tutoring. And it's, it's really, uh, the teachers will be doing as long and as well as the counselors will be looking to see which students they think maybe need a little more assistance. If a student maybe um, seems a little bit distant in, distant in the Zoom, counselors will jump in. Um, parents can certainly request that from the teachers or send an email to the counselor so they can troubleshoot the problem and see what's going on. Mr. Herrera did post uh, some of the club opportunities that are going to be available on the bottom of the chat. A uh, question regarding students, how are students going to conduct volunteer hours? Um, we will be uh, working, myself and Ms. Zabaglo, to touch base with all the students once school kind of gets underway. Obviously, we'll be, you know, adjusting student hour requirements as needed um, and then working with organizations to kind of identify some opportunities for students um when it's safe to do so i know we have some students that have already emailed saying that they're doing volunteer service already um, when they have time with their family uh, so we're making sure we have them keep track of that as well but as you know once school gets underway we'll be touching base to students to kind of let them know um, how we're going to be doing that this year we also cut the parent hours in half um, and are very mindful that if we're not able to provide that opportunity for you to serve, say, participating in a fundraiser in some way, then we'll go back to the drawing board and figure out what those parent hours are going to be. But at the moment, they're cut in half so that we can make sure at least that, um, you know, just anticipate what different events, you know. Having said that, I mean, I'm starting to think, oh, golf tournament in September that we're not having. But we're doing a virtual golf tournament. So, um, our uh, fundraising department will get together and figure out what type of help we need from the parents to uh, enable them to um, get hours completed, along with um, the students as well, as, as Mr. Paul Maris said about the Christian service hours. We're very mindful. We're not being unreasonable. We do want kids to be able to um, feel purpose and feel like they're making a difference by doing service hours in some way, Christian service hours. Another question, at least the last question that we have right now, is if 
SBHS open for in-person instruction and a student or family chose not to uh, return or to remain in the distance learning, um, would the classroom instruction be live streamed for the students at home? I had talked earlier um, that uh, with Google Classroom, we're able to record, and with Zoom, we're able to record those lessons. And we're working on perfecting that so that if a student um, is, a, is maybe sick one day, not able to participate, maybe comes in late due to you know competing from broadband with, with another sibling, so that they're able to access those lessons. What we're asking is that they communicate again with the teachers and let them know, hey, I had a problem this morning, but I'm jumped, I jumped on at this time, but I will go back and review that lesson and the teachers will be able to post those lessons um, in Google Classroom. Are there any other questions? We, uh, this uh, Zoom meeting has been recorded, so we'll make sure that we put that on our school website for uh, you to reference. Um, but if there's anything that comes up along the way, you know, as you're thinking maybe through the weekend, um, let us know. Reach out. Reach out to myself, uh, my secretary. Um, you can contact your student's counselor, um, teachers. Let us know what's going on so we can better, you know, plan for a great school year. I'll see a couple. Is there any more questions? I just wondered about Mr. Herrera, uh, Coach Herrera's question about um, the dress code. It, um, while the child, uh, while the students are at home, I assume uh, they're not in uniform. Yes, or are they? Yeah. Uh, hi. Hi, Ms. Patel. Hi. Uh, I I did put a, um, uh, a little blurb there in the chat to respond to that. But anyway, yes. The, so the. The only requirement that we are expecting right now is that the students wear either their school polo or school sweatshirt sweater uh, during Zoom. You know, so not, you know, if they if they don't have shoes on, we're not going to know if you know. <laughs> we're not going to, you know, they have to follow the uh, pants requirement, except for making sure they're wearing pants, obviously. Uh, that's but the only uh, requirement at home, yeah. so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So yeah, so generally just really, you know, what, what we can see from, uh, you know, from about their chest up is what most, mostly what we see on Zoom anyway. And um, so school polo, school sweatshirt, sweater are fine. Uh, you know, normally in the school day uh, when they're on campus, we require them to wear the polo and sweatshirt and, and sweater, but it, one or the other is fine for the, uh, for the Zoom. Uh, so okay. that, that's really our expectation, yeah. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Looks like there's a question about if students need to pick any get up any materials. At this point, no. So we are uh, we did have a discussion with um, our art teacher. Um, students who are working on art and need certain supplies, uh, Mr. Thomas will most likely put together um, a, a drive-through pickup kind of a thing for supplies for the projects that he's going to be assigning. Sorry, I went over the time frame. Does anybody have any other questions? I didn't want to keep uh, keep you too long this evening, but we hope that uh, you found uh, this evening um, useful. And if something comes up, please you know let us know. We're ha we're happy to answer questions. Give us a call or, or send us an email. We're excited for the school year. We're excited for our day two of um, our faculty in service, and then of course freshman and transfer uh, orientation on Monday. So we're, we're getting excited, we're getting geared up, and we know it's going to be a great year. Great. Okay. All right. Well, I will go ahead and close the meeting. Thank you all so much for attending. We appreciate it. God bless and stay Thank well, you. and we'll be in touch. Thank Have you. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks, Bye. everyone, for participating.